Hello everybody, welcome to today's webinar of breathable piston coatings, better fit for more power and durability. I am Amanda Harmoning. I will be moderating today's event. I am an admin assistant at AERA and joining me from the AERA team is Rob Monroe. Hey everyone, yeah, Rob Monroe here. I look after membership and technical development over at AERA and both Amanda and I are going to be in the background today to help answer any questions that you've got. So throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, there's a little questions box there in your control panel. Amanda's going to show you how to use that. And then we'll get all those questions over to the crew over here at Line to Line after the webinar, and we'll get those answered for you. So I'll go back to Amanda, and she'll show you how to use that control panel. All right, first up, there are a couple different ways to listen into today's webinar. One is to dial in via phone. If you do this, just make sure you enter that audio pin. This makes sure that the line stays muted and we don't have any audio issues during the presentation. And the other option is to listen in with your computer's mic and speakers. And for this, just make sure you have that appropriate radial button selected so that you don't have any audio issues. And as I said, everything stays muted on our end. Um, a couple other things to know, there is a orange box with an arrow in it. This is your grab tab. This allows you to collapse and expand your control panel during the presentation. This comes in handy for when you're watching. You can just be in full screen mode and then if you have any questions you can pop that back open and ask them. Which takes us to the last part which is the questions box. If at any point you have any questions, comments, anything for us, go ahead and put those in this box and um, Rob and I will be in the background looking at those and we will do a Q&A at the end with the folks from line to line. At this time I will hand things back over to Rob and we'll get going with today's presentation. Super, thanks Amanda. So just a couple housekeeping slides to go through. We'll keep it short uh, just so we can get on to the today's presentation. So due to the COVID-19 situation all of us here at AERA we all have been set up to work at home as well as we do have still, we have staff at headquarters, so we're able to serve you still. All the techs are working. Uh, everything's just status quo with us, so we can keep on working. You can reach us by phone or by fax or email during our regular hours of 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central, and that's Monday through Friday. So uh, everything's, everything's good for us. And like I say, especially on the tech line, if you need to get hold of us, we are, all are here and we are working. So couple things to let you know about. Uh, we had our schedule set for the 2020 regional conferences and uh, due to the COVID, uh, we've had to postpone and cancel a couple of them so far. So what we've got is our SCAT regional conference on May 2nd. We've had to postpone that. And so we'll keep you posted as to when we're gonna uh, get that one back up and we'll reschedule that one. The one, the Hastings Piston Rings, we've had to cancel that one. And we're looking at 2022. Uh, we'll get that one back on the schedule again. And uh, for now, those two we've had to uh, to do something with. Our Goodson and Sun and Regional on August 11th, that's still a go. And our EPWI on October 16th in Dallas, that is still a go. So we'll definitely keep you informed as to, uh, as to what's going on. Now, the good news is uh, both SCAT and Hastings, uh, right around the date, pretty close to when they were going to have the regional, have also decided that they're going to help us out and do up a, a webinar so we can still get that information over to you and keep you informed that way. So the other thing that we did is we have bumped up our webinar schedule. So we're going to have webinars every two weeks now right through till summer. So on May 7th, we're going to have total seal piston rings. We'll have Lake Speed Jr. is going to come on and he's going to teach us about frictional losses in an engine. Tom from SCAT will be on May 21st. On June 2nd, we're going to have Greg Arsenault from AMBAC International, and he's going to talk about failure mode analysis with turbochargers. And June 19th, we will have Hastings Piston Rings as a webinar. So looking forward to those. And like I say, you're going to see those come across uh, your email or as well as social media. So keep an eye out, get registered for all those ones. And this is a good time to keep everybody informed as well as, uh, you know, bring up, bring up our professional development just a little bit. Now, for those of you um, that you probably have gotten your second quarter engine professional in the mail already, and if you haven't, uh, you can still read the digital version. It's available on our website at www.engineprofessional.com. Uh, lots of really good application-driven articles in there. 
Our goal with the magazine is that after reading it, you should be able to take something back with you to the shop Monday morning. A really good article in there covering uh, abradable pistol coatings that uh, we had an, a good article and Andy and the guys from Line to Line are going to expand on that article today with this webinar. So uh, a great magazine. And uh, like I say, it's, uh, it's available digitally. Now, if you're on today and you're not receiving Engine Professional and you would like to, just put in the questions box, let Amanda know that you'd like to receive the magazine and we'll get you on our list and we'll get that mailed to you. So real simple, just let us know that you want to receive it and we'll get that over to you. Now, AERA, we'd like giving away free stuff. And uh, we have our quarter two giveaway for our members who join between April 1st and June 30th. We've uh, got a nice Lincoln welder there from Lincoln Electric and Contingency Connection. They've helped us out with this welder. So all you need to do is, uh, if you're a new member that joins in this quarter, or members that renew in the quarter, along with any of our monthly members that pay and whose anniversary is due in this quarter, you've got a chance to win this welder. We're going to do a drawing on June 30th, and what we'll do is we're going to actually get this out. The winner will get a free, it'll get come to you prepaid, freight and all. So good chance to win this welder. Another good time to talk about professional development, especially with a lot of us uh, working from home and, and doing things just a little bit different right now. We've got our online training program. So we have a cylinder head machinist certification program as well as an engine machinist certification program. It's $150. It does include this book, the Automotive Machining and Engine Repair Booklet. And uh, once you're done, uh, we give you one year to complete this online training program. And it's very, very in-depth, covers all the different aspects of machining and engine repair. So again, for $150, you can, uh, you can do that. Looks really good on a resume, as well as, like I say, if you're already in the shop and you're looking to hone in your skills just a little more, this is a good time to do that. All right, so one last slide here, and then we'll bring up, uh, bring up Andy and the crew from line to line. We want to let you know that AERA, through our Educational Rebuilders Foundation, we have $25,000 that we're, we've allocated for this year for grants and scholarships. So this is a good time to take advantage of this. And you do have to be a member of AERA to take advantage of this program. And uh, this is for those who maybe desire training in the field of engine building or rebuilding. You know, a good example may be maybe you were looking at taking a welding course or something like that. So if you just go out to our website, you can go out to, a, there is our link for EREF on the website. There's a tab there that tells you a little more information about it. And this is, like I say, it's, we've got $25,000. We've been very lucky. A lot, of our, um, a lot of our suppliers step in and help us out. And uh, we have uh, live auctions. We do it at PRI as well as we did it at Rottler last year. And uh, we were able to pool up quite a bit of money to help, help those students who want to, uh, to apply those for grants and scholarships. So really good time to do that. All right, well, let's get on with today's webinar, Abradable Piston Coatings, Better Fit for More Power and Durability. Uh, the presenter today is going to be Andy from Line to Line Coatings, and uh, along with him, we've got Mark and we've got Woody. So how's it going today, guys? Very well, thanks. It's going great. great. Thanks. Glad to be here. Super. Well, we'll uh, we'll let you guys do your thing, and uh, like I say, any questions, we'll uh, Amanda and I will get those going, and we'll save them for the end for you. All righty. So, hello everyone. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for joining us. Um, as a new member of Era, um, we've found that Era is an awesome resource. Uh, for technical stuff and marketing, not to mention the publications, you can stack the issues like a like an encyclopedia of what to do with engines. It's it's amazing, and the the people we're reaching. So anyway, just want to thank the Era team. Why weren't we in it five or ten years ago? I don't know, but uh, and especially with Amanda Harmoning and Rob Monroe for putting this together, they make it really easy. And, uh, and fun. So uh, today we're going to talk about abradable powder coatings on pistons. Um, abradable powder coatings are self-fitting coatings. Over here you, you may be able to see that it's kind of a fuzzy looking coating. Um, 
the fuzz allows it to seat in quickly and then it, the coating is meant to last the life of the device, uh, the life of the component. Um, so because it's self-fitting, we have to put it on at different thicknesses so it finds its fit. So we go from like a thousand to ten thousandths and over ten thousandths per surface. Usually uh, one to three thousandths on a, on a surface does the trick. Uh, the, the resins we use are, they perform from, well, over here, minus 40 to even close to 600 degrees we've tested. But pistons, of course, we're worried about, you know, up to about 260 F is a hot oil uh, temperature. So uh, excellent chemical resistance. Um, so it's, you know, you can treat the parts just like a normal engine part as far as cleaning and, and that kind of thing. Um, it's made out of a blend of plastics and solid lubricants. Um, so we, we have many formulas that really vary in uh, strength or hardness of, of the material itself. And then the texture that's on the top, you know, referring to that roughness, how rough is it? And then of course the thickness. So when you build your device, it goes together pretty easily or very easily, depending on the application, and then finds its fit. So in a, in a piston application, what it really does is it enhances the performance of a power cylinder in terms of function and life. And uh, on a multi-cylinder engine, it also, and from engine to engine, if you're building 10 or 100 a day, it actually makes the repeatability of each power, uh, each power cylinder, uh, you know, you get less scatter among cylinders. So uh, we'll look at the fuzz. Uh, it's fuzzy as applied, you know, there's this texture. So this, if you're following my mouse, there's little mountains and little valleys, and that's what you feel uh, as the fuzz. When you install this on a piston and start running it up and down, those little mountains get knocked off and you'll get these uh, lighter plateaus. Well, they're, they're lighter in this photograph, but you can see that's a nice polished plateau uh, and randomly spaced around this plateau uh, surface is pockets to hold oil. Notice those pockets aren't connected, they're random and individual, so the oil gets stuck in each one, unlike a normal piston where the, the machining marks can actually provide a, a leak path for the oil to get out of the loaded area. So uh, when you install it in an engine, um, it will, when you start operating your engine, it will find its fit for each cylinder bore. So each piston is gonna find the fit that that bore wants. Um, and we call that Strybeck fitting. Richard Strybeck figured out uh, that if you, have, if you study the thickness of an oil film between two parts versus the coefficient of friction over here on the y-axis, um, he figured out that when you don't have enough oil thickness, your, your parts will touch and you get high friction. So that this is called boundary lubrication over here where you're touching a lot. You've got asperities getting knocked off both surfaces probably. Um, and um, so as you get more oil between your parts, you get less frequent contact and your friction is dropping. Um, so you get more and more oil. Let's say you got a lot of oil between your parts. Uh, they'll never touch. But over here, you're actually stirring more oil than you need to lubricate your surfaces. So a really important thing to look at here is this is film thickness of oil, but it's related to the roughness. In other words, if you need a, if you have a very rough surface, you've got a bury that roughness in four times as much oil or your parts are going to be touching. 
if you're down at twice your roughness level, you're probably gonna be low friction, but you're gonna be touching and you're gonna have wear up here. So this is an extension of the Strybeck curve. It shows the wear. This is a high wear rate up here. And this is, you can see the wear bubble actually ends when you get to a certain level of oil film. Uh, again, related to the roughness of the surfaces. So over here is hydrodynamic lubrication. You know what it's like to hit a puddle when you're driving down the road in a thunderstorm. All of a sudden, your car is who knows where it's going. Uh, over here, you've got great traction and a lot of friction. So we'll explain now how the, the coating does its thing in these uh, circumstances. So we build our engine with the soft graphite coating. We build it too tight uh, across the entire skirt. So then you, you build your engine too tight. Naturally, you don't have enough oil film in some areas and uh, the graphite starts to wear in. So as you get your engine warmed up and run it for some minutes or heats or cycles, you're, you're actually wearing down this bubble uh, until the asperities are no longer touching. So we're moving actually in a spot, you know, down this curve to low friction. And when you get to the low friction area, all of a sudden, look at that, there's no wear. So uh, it, it actually locks in the geometry that is perfect for the bore because when that oil film can form right here, the wear stops. So uh, once that happens on a piston, your piston is as tight as it can possibly be in, in the bore. And you're not adding friction because you're not actually touching. Um, so you've got a minimum amount of oil between there because again, if we jump up, Oh, I don't, I don't want to do it that way. But if you remember those polished plateaus, they're very polished. So you only need a tiny bit of oil to, to cover the plateaus. So I am going to jump up real quick. Uh, these plateaus, if you notice, it's surrounded by little oil pockets. So this plateau here becomes its own oil wedge. It's supplied by this bore this pour on the downstroke, and then when it reverses, the oil comes from this pour and flows across the surface. So it's really neat to have a thousand oil wedges on your skirt instead of one giant oil wedge and a bucket of extra oil moving along with it. So anyway, the this all happens when your engine is running. So the final shape of your piston is determined when it's at temperature, everything is torqued together. It's even in the frame of the car with the twist of the frame in a sprint car affecting you know, how the shape of the bores are. Everything is absolutely involved when this piston finds its final shape. So uh, that's a big advantage. Um, so again i guess i get touched on this already you only need a tiny bit of oil to to make a, a mirror very very slippery right so if the strybeck curve here this is talking about basically one point on your skirt each point on the skirt is going to go through this process so if you're over here on the wings of a skirt um there's less load, less contact. It's gonna be a different environment than at the gauge point, let's say. So um, if we look at kind of a Strybeck event in each of these boxes, uh, a normal piston, you have this proud area at the gauge point. Um, and then that's where you tend to see scratches. You know, Even with a clean build, you may see some scratches when you pierce your oil film. So uh, around that is an area where the oil film is actually ideal, but it, it's small. Uh, and then all this green area, you're just plowing extra oil back and forth and that takes energy. 
and it also makes the rings job harder to get rid of that oil. So if we move back over here after Strybeck fitting, you can tell we've got uniform loading over a large area on the skirt. Uh, it, and uh, so anyway, this is a this is a big feature. Uh, the, this oil film over here is so good. It's very thin, but if the pressure comes down and you're the drop of oil where my arrow is, you don't even know which way to go. And you've got to go pretty far for your film to collapse. So, and then you hit those pores that we showed above and there's more oil. So on this side, it's very easy. If I'm the oil that's right here, I squirt out to here and then I get my contact. So over here, uh, it's really hard to make your parts touch. And that is why these coatings, even though they're soft, you can pull them out of a 3000 horsepower engine and there's fuzz in areas of the skirt when this piston has been completely pounded on. That, and then you take your fingernail and there's fuzz there. You're like, why is that? Well, the reason is this oil film is so good that that tender fuzz isn't actually touching. So this is a picture of a, of a piston that kind of shows exactly what we just showed you uh, with the schematic. This is a Outlaw 358 Sprint engine. Um, this engine builder is a, is a world-class guy. Uh, he doesn't let us tell his name, but um, he wins. And anyway, he changed piston designs, had scuffing. He was watching you know, races wondering, oh my gosh, when's the smoke gonna come? So he tried our stuff and he was nice enough to send us back a piston after after the duty cycle and by the way his his scuffing problem just disappeared and what we saw was really cool inside this piston there is a fillet it's a really stiff piston so there is a fillet that comes up to about here and uh then you know the skirt obviously is more flexible than that stiff fillet so under this extreme outlaw operation, uh, this area was touching the bore or you know, carrying all the load. And this area was not carrying any load and not supporting the oil film. So this, we believe, became an oil scraper area because of that fillet on the inside and it shaves the oil off the bore and then you start getting scuffing. So, uh, you know, there's, you'll see this in different, different examples. That's why prototyping, if you're wondering, oh, where is, where's it hot? Where's this? Where's it tight? What's that? You see these witness marks and you can learn a lot about your new project. So back to pistons uh, in general. So we've kind of, kind of covered a bunch of things. So generally, uh, you know, from a larger perspective, you build it too tight. The, the graphite coating hones itself to fit each bore. You have less integrated skirt clearance here. So that means, you know, the coating is taking up the clearance between your piston and your bore, not just at the gauge point. You have to add up all the clearance across your skirt and integrate it. Um, so you get a total number, maybe a, well, it would probably be in milliliters or something, but um, anyway, your piston runs so tight in that bore that your rings are following a, a straight line instead of an ellipse, and they don't flutter as much. They don't have to reset and reconnect with the bore wall and the groove, uh, and they don't move around as, as much and, and pierce oil film, so they live longer. So a lot of guys, a lot of applications, you hear less slap and less noise. And when you hear slap and noise, there are oil films piercing uh, and you're getting wear. So you're on, the, you're on the downhill of your engine life. So this stuff, the oil film so stable, it really is a permanent geometric refinement of, of your part. You know, 40,000 miles, 100,000 miles, 
the coding is still going to be improving your profile and load distribution. So a couple other things, you know, if you got a barrier, anything between two metals is going to prevent scuffing. Um, if you get a piece of foreign debris going through there, uh, we see bearing material gets embedded in, in the coating. And instead of trashing out your bores and your pistons, you can just recoat your piston or, you know, there's no damage. Uh, so uh, I get, we've covered these, but anyway, you know, having it tight, things aren't moving with the long-term resistance and the oil film keeps it tight and still nothing's moving. And you can actually arrest some of these failure modes, uh, you know, in a, in a cylinder kit. So let's look a little closer at secondary piston motions and their effects on rings. Um, rock, of course, makes the ring work harder because it's, it's supposed to be round and then up at the top, it's supposed to become elliptical because the piston rocks and the bore doesn't. And then it's got to uh, slap over to the other side and, and uh, then get shot down with fire. And the ring is trying to adjust. It's amazing that guys like Total Seal and Hastings can make something st stay in contact with all that motion, but they do. Uh, Anyway, another thing, rock. If if you rock your piston, you need to leave more clearance above that top ring, and that's a that's an emissions problem, and a unburned hydrocarbons, unburned oil problem. So um, you don't want a big crevice volume up here. Um, rock can also pump oil around the rings as it, as they move. So if if you put APC on your piston it'll keep the rings square to the bore. And the rings, then they just have to go up and down instead of up ellipse, round ellipse, down ellipse, round ellipse, up. You know, they just go up and down and they stay rounder. So that improves their ceiling tremendously. And uh, another neat thing is if you displace a lot of this wasted oil capacity with a coating that carries load, your, your volume of oil that the rings have to swallow and return is much smaller. So, uh, and another thing, if you can hear, you know, or rock leads to component impacts. Forge piston, you start it up, it's cold, you hear them rattling, it goes away. Well, all that rattling was a problem. You know, your piercing oil films, cause and wear. So we can help address that. Um, so back to kind of integrated skirt clearance. If we look at the secondary motions of a piston, uh, this would be a top view. So, you know, you got your piston a little smaller. These are dramatized so you can see what we're talking about. But this white area is the skirt area that's not filled in. And the rings are expected to go out and meet the bore and cover up this white area. Uh, you can see over here, because we have that proud gauge point, that all the side load is basically in the center of the skirt. And you've got this gap over here. So if we take up all that gap on both sides with an abradable coating that finds that perfect fit to a micron size oil film in, oh, how to do that, micron oil film uh, in between, it stays in the middle. Your ring doesn't have to move all over. So this integrated skirt clearance is a, is a bad thing. It allows bad things to happen and we get rid of it. So if you look at the side view, same thing, you got your integrated skirt clearance uh, and you know, that would be down here. You can see up here your crevice volume, you know, your top land has to be small because all that rock or it'll hit. If we can keep the piston square, everything is better. Uh, you don't need it. You can actually make your top land more proud. Um, 
and your rings don't have to run all over the place to keep up with the sealing job. So a little close up on the rings. Uh, so we showed a little bit of wear, you know, on with a tilted one after these oil film piercing events, you're going to start to lose your profiles. And of course, you can say with different materials, this will never happen. These are all generalities that don't all apply to every engine. But um, so, you know, one thing we see often is a really nice, sharp second ring, and that's the oil control, you know, after the duty cycle. A lot of times on a normal build with a lot of clearance, that that sharp line will turn into a wavy, you know, it's it's not uniform and it's wider. You know you're losing ring tension and losing oil sealing if you see wear. Well, we see a lot of pistons go through their whole life and don't have uh, that that edge chopped off. So you can, you know, this is pretty dramatic here, uh, a big gap and no gap. That's probably a little overdone. Um, so an, an indication of some data that we have off a chainsaw illustrates these vibration effects of simply coating the piston. So we took a chainsaw, put a calibrated accelerometer on it and ran it. We didn't get our speed exactly identical when we did the A and the B because it was a hand trigger job, but you can see these piston uh, harmonics, uh, they're in the right uh, frequency range to, oh, I did it again, right frequency range to be the piston, and uh, it's like a 50% reduction. So this is, this is why you're, you get carpal tunnel when you're cutting that tree down. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it, you can feel it, and the power is better with this, you know, stable piston. So, uh, in a nutshell, that's that's the biggest thing our, our coatings do for an engine and where they're used. Uh, we've done a lot of work with racers. Um, they're great. They try stuff. They give us feedback. Uh, this is Mike Janis. Uh, a pro mod champion. Uh, it's great for prototyping. Uh, oh, so racers, you know, they, they can push new limits. Uh, once they dial in their recipe with these coatings, they can, they can do more design stuff that they couldn't do before and get a little edge. So on the prototyping side, we're in some drones and some military drones actually in production now, but it was neat to watch the, uh, development cycle go um, and uh, then for production and aftermarket we have been teamed up with United Engine and Machine for quite a few years. Um, those guys can pump pistons out with our coating at a production level for, for aftermarket and even uh, lower volume production. And then probably the most fun we have is the restoration stuff because if you got an old clunker that nothing fits we can make it all fit. So this is a 1928 uh, BMW. It went on the cannonball run. It was team number 23. Uh, and these guys had us coat the pistons, the a bunch of stuff in the gearbox, bushings. We did the trunnion. I think it's the trunnions up on the suspension and little hinges. And they drove from... Uh, Florida to Washington State and came in second place. Um, so that was a really neat, neat event. So anyway, most of our data is good data, but it's from the field. Um, so these are the things that we hear in terms of performance, you get a little bit of power, better leak down, um, less variability in sealing among cylinders so you can tune at a race engine better because all your cylinders are running the same instead of having leak down ranging from you know let's say 10 to 20 percent for a really loose motor you take that motor after five weekends you'll have four to nine percent after you've run it five weekends 
when you're you without the coating, guys are used to getting 10 and, and 20, you know, range in a build. And they say that's, you know, that's good enough. Uh, so we, anyway, that's really neat. So you get cleaner combustion because we control the oil. And then of course you can tune your engine better because the oil's not knocking your octane down. Uh, you get less blow by. Pan vacuum is one that people, you know, they see it immediately. Hey, my, I got pan vacuum at the finish line. And, uh, you know, and then you start to realize, hey, if it's so clean, I can, I can lower my ring tension, get more power freed up. And oh my gosh, it's still cleaner than it used to be. So uh, these help the racers win quite a bit over in this column. And then these help the racers get the track to the track more often. Uh, so, and the OEMs, you know, it's, or, or the aftermarkets, it's, it's gonna help their, their engines last longer. So it's, this is the money column and this is the win the race column. Anyway, you get less carbon burned up, oil particles, again, foreign to particle tolerance, lower oil consumption, all these benefits. Um, so to move away from the anecdotal side of things, we, we are glad to have received an Army SIBR. Uh, it's a two-year program, SBIR, with the CCDC, which used to be TARDEC. Um, so we are looking to demonstrate and quantify the efficiencies we've seen in the field uh, on a and durability, very much so durability, in a Cummins 2.8 turbo diesel uh, with and without our, our coating on the skirts. So we've got a mule engine to get everything, all the analytical stuff, I mean all the all the instrumentation dialed. Then we're doing A, B on two, two engines. And then in concert, uh, Dr. Harold Schock at Michigan State University, he is measuring and modeling the cylinder kit uh, and using an analytical model to see what happens when, uh, when you add this improved geometry to the skirt, what does that do to the rings? And then what does that do to the oil film? And what does that do to the blow by and the pumping? It's an incredible model that they have. And we're just really pleased to, uh, to get a look at the technical side. Um, there's a lot of folks involved listed here. Um, it's been really fun getting started. Um, oh, where did I go? Okay, so anyway, abradable powder coatings, the key is they give you a perfect fit every time. Um, you dry applications like turbos and blowers or compressors, um, you can let your turbine wheel just dig its way into this and uh, you get better uh, throttle response. You know, you'll, you'll pick up your boost a couple thousand RPMs earlier than without the coating. Same thing, this is, you don't want leaks and you don't want friction here. Um, oil pumps, it works great. At low RPM, your oil pump scratches and clearances in your pump actually limit the flow. And that's, that's where a lot of damage happens to the engine. So we can seal that up and give you higher oil pressure at idle than you've ever had and you know you're protected. Um, Kind of a combo dry wet application is uh, gun parts. You know, there's they want them oiled, but you don't want a pile of oil because then you get the dust and the dirt. So we're we're improving the fit of those uh, mechanisms and guns and uh, improving the life of the equipment. So uh, line to line coatings were kind of spread around the U.S. We're looking to spread around the world more. Um, but uh, we've got, we're in Michigan here, this is the headquarters, so we'll prototype whatever comes to our way. Um, US Chrome, they, they do Nicosil in, and they wanna work on the other side, they're in Wisconsin, the other side being the piston. Brian Neal, down in South Carolina, he has taken the Eastern side of the states 
or Southeastern, and uh, Chris Borowick out in Nevada. So you can send all these people your pistons. Uh, if it's not pistons, just send them to us. And then of course, you've got UEM, which is uh, your access to volume plus they'll do all their race stuff if you order you know line to line they'll they'll do it on any piston of theirs uh they won't do other people's parts though so uh we're really pleased to be uh you know growing across the country it's been uh fun uh so now how to order the stuff because there has been uh you know it's a little different approach we we always want you to normally you would get your pistons and then bore your holes to fit the pistons we prefer if you tell us your bore size so if there's a mistake we're we're not working on the wrong bore size but uh so you know in a cold piston if you look at this is dramatized as well but you've got this clearance here that would be your normal recommended piston of the wall clearance. So you build your engine at that and you can see there's room for rock. So um, what we do is we take up about 75% of that gap with the coating, cold. Now these are cold when we're measuring, right? So, you know, you can go snug, you can go looser here, it depends on your application and in you know your judgment your familiarity um so after you run the full duty cycle you pull it out and measure it and you'll go wow you know they said i needed four thousandths up here but i'm measuring i've got two thousandths at the gauge point of cold clearance that's interesting down at the bottom i've got even less because less of the coating wears off the areas that aren't as proud up at the top uh you you know sometimes if you're running really hot this will grow out so far that there's not a whole lot of room oh did it again not a lot of room so anyway this is what you would measure after it's fitted perhaps through its duty cycle and then when this guy gets hot you can see the top lands move out and a lot of your skirt is engaged with the wall unlike over here so i went a little longer and i want to turn it over to uh you guys for any questions that you have um mark mark gelstein mark gelstein is our business development manager many of you have met with him or talked to him on the phone uh PRI, we love seeing you guys at our booth. Um, and then there's Woody, uh, AI Legrand Wood is his real name. The third is his real name. He goes by Woody. He's a former Can Am and NASCAR engine builder. And DRC Engineering is Woody's company. He's developed engine components for F1, NASCAR, IRL, NHRA. Uh, so, um, and he loves the stuff, so that's why I love Woody. One of the many reasons. Um, anyway, we've had questions before. How do you measure um, a piston, you know, with the coating on it? You know, if you're used to a window, a window can be put in. This is a production uh, job by UEM, and this is an Icon uh, forged piston for aftermarket, and you got the window. You can see there's the, uh, it's a little different when we, well, anyway, never mind that. Uh, so let's see. With that, I'll really turn it over for questions. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, great material. Um, really good material. So we do have lots of questions coming in. And uh, what we'll do is uh, we, if we start to run a bit short on time, we can always we'll direct your questions over to uh, to the guys at Line to Line to make sure, and they'll get back to you. They'll they'll answer the questions for you. So we'll just start plugging away with questions, and uh, I'll just let you guys decide who will answer them. So the first question that we've got is, when assembling an engine with line to line coated pistons, 
Should a regular engine oil be applied to the piston skirts or should a dedicated assembly lube be used instead? Well, I guess I'll take this one. Basically, we want you to do everything the same as you would normally do it. So if you have a particular oil that works for your engine and you're familiar, just use that. The okay. one All right. thing you see when you run your engine the first time, you will get some particulate in the, in the oil during the break-in. And you don't need to throw that oil away or change it. Anything big is gonna is gonna get caught in the filter. Anything small is it's like assembly lube. Some of them have particulates. May actually make your oil better. Uh, so that's the oil. Okay. All right. Um, another question we have here for you, kind of in regards to a two-stroke. So they've asked. Can you can you coat the center of a of the dome of a two stroke piston? Um, sort of, uh, it says here not the squish band areas around the OD. So it looks like they're just wanting to coat maybe the dome of the piston. Well, we can put a thermal barrier in that area, but um, up in the fire, this is plastic and graphite. So it you know if you had a really short run, it may live. Um, long term, it's probably going to oxidize and burn away. I don't think it would hurt anything. It would just go out your exhaust. Okay. All right. Uh, another question is, when friction is reduced by the coating, what is the reduction in heat load because of less friction? <laughs> if we can tell you that after we complete our SBIR, that'll mean we have a really good analytical model. Um, you know, it's really hard to separate different forms of heat flow and, and all that. So we're working on it. One thing that I will add is that the coating holds the oil between the parts. So we, you know that a lot of times you test friction of a material by rubbing on the material. The whole point of our material is that when it does its thing, you're no longer rubbing on the material. You're rubbing on a few microns of oil on the top of those plateaus. Okay, super. Uh, another question for you is, Will the abraded material negatively negatively affect the other running surfaces like bearings or cam lobes? No. I think the short answer is no, but a, a little bit more definitive, as Andy alluded to earlier. The the particulate that's that's abraded, if you please, is a combination of graphite and plastic. Graphite is a you know long been known to be a friction reducer. Again, the particles are very small. They're you know in the micron ranges and uh you know if there is a larger particulate it comes off in the uh it'll be in in your filter cartridge depending on the capability of that cartridge to filter but uh, generally speaking you, you may find that this material could actually enhance a surface to surface wear in other areas of the engine it's certainly not going to harm it okay all right excellent um Another question, and we might have touched this just a little bit before in this other question, but they've asked, how does the coating affect piston temperature? We have some data where, because most of the heat flow comes either, it goes through the rings. So the piston, a stable piston, your rings are in better contact with the bore. So you actually get better heat flow. The other way heat, out is the oil coming up on the bottom of the piston and pulling heat out that way. So a gentleman named Mike Wienant, he's a two-stroke uh, wizard, world-class engine builder, and he has observed, you know, and he's convinced, so I'm convinced that his pistons run cooler with the coating than without. Uh, but again, that's a modeling thing. Every application is different. So, uh, but uh, we, we've never had a case where someone said, wow, it's running really hot with your coating. You know, 
Um, so that's the best I can do. Anybody else? Woody? Mark? No, I think generally most of the response we've had is is that they remain the same or actually have a little bit better thermal profile with the coatings. And again, it's application specific where we deal with customers that sometimes have half the block filled with hard block, uh, et cetera, in, in, in some of your NHRA engine configurations versus endurance race engines that, you know, basically are looking at, you know, full capacity cooling system. So it, it's tough to, it's tough to answer that definitively unless you know exactly what the application is and so forth. Uh, generally speaking, we we don't see increases in temperature in in operation. It, it's the latter reductions. All right, here's another one for you guys. Uh, this gentleman has asked: Would boxer engines benefit from this coating because of the pist because of the position of the pistons? Are you asking the salesman or the engineer? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you guys decide. Of course. Yeah, it, yeah. it's been in Porsches. Uh, it's been in every kind of design. You know, all these prototype weird engines, opposing pistons, two strokes, four strokes, different fuel. And, you know, it, it does its thing. You settle that piston down and improve oil films and, and everything gets better. Okay. All right. Here's a good one. Um, what does on average an applied powder coating, like what, well, let me reword that. What does on average the APC coating weigh? Uh, that of course depends on your thickness and your size you know your area of your skirt and i'm gonna say 90 percent of our stuff is like let's see it would be like maybe 0.4 grams or you know a thick one might get up to 0.6 so in terms of balancing your engine, we've never heard you can balance your engine and then send us the pistons and everything's fine. We're, it, it really is a tiny amount. Okay, all right. Sounds good. And I think we might have addressed, uh, this gentleman's asked, we think we might have addressed this, but I'll let you guys expand on it a bit. Is there a recommended type and weight of oil to use during break-in after installing coated pistons? What type of prep is required on used pistons prior to coating? Uh, oil wise, yeah, we covered that. Just do whatever you normally do. Um, in terms of used pistons, we, we're not set up to degrease stuff. So we charge a lot if you set us dirty pistons because it'll booger up our process, right? So, um, so, and then what was the second half of that question? Uh, whether they um, needed any prep, I believe, on used pistons, uh, which Andy mentioned, uh, we like to have them clean, but we just basically want the bare piston, no rings, clips, or uh, um, wrist pins. And uh, we have a standard prep once they arrive to, uh, for new and used to uh, you know, get them ready for the coating process. We charge a little extra to pick out the pieces of metal out of the skirt before we coat them. Okay, all right. Um, another question, are, are you guys, uh, would this slideshow be available if anybody wants it? Um, if they if they want to have a copy or to see some of your slides? Just... Absolutely. Okay, all right, excellent. Um, here's one. What are the recommended cylinder wall surface finishes? Uh, do you just stick with the ring manufacturer specs or what What? Uh, what do you do there? Woody? Yeah, uh, that's a that's a good question. And, and Rob, that's also a pretty good answer. Depending on your application, uh, let's say you're gonna run a, you know, a, an NHRA drag race type application versus say a NASCAR and uh, restrictor plate engine, you would, you would basically looking at the the compression ring and its related coating and and the profile of that that ring for example total seal a company that we work with a lot 
is going to provide that recommended or surface finish for you and and that's what we stick with you know pretty generally okay you know, all right the underlying thing is that we're not our coating doesn't offer you a an opportunity to go with say a super shiny mirror face surface uh, you know you have to re remember that that bore surface and that cross hatch is is in effect going to give you a volumetric oil capacity in your cylinder that just and you can actually establish the hydrodynamic relationship with the pocketed oil on our skirt coating okay all right, we got time. I know there's quite a few questions still that, uh, that that are still unanswered. And what we'll do, like I said, everybody, is we're going to get those over to uh, to the guys over here at Line to Line. Uh, we do try and like to uh, keep our webinars right around the one hour mark. Just we respect your time. We know a lot of you are in the shops and you're busy. And uh, so, one more question, guys, for you: uh, What is the desired? Uh, um, sorry, what is the recommended? piston skirt design for your coating it or is there a recommended pit uh, particular piston skirt design well again that's similar to that piston ring question rob where if if you have a uh, an application of short run high load you know pro stock or nhra uh you know class racing or something like that you might run a you know a nice bridged reinforced emboss type skirt and if if you're running in say a a lower RPM state, you know, road race engine, uh, Le Mans 24 hour, something of that nature, you may, you may have a different configuration. You know, so there's a lot of uh, discussion out there in the engine building world, whether you're going to run full circle skirts, you know, which is basically a piston where you, you pick it up and look at the bottom of it and the, you, you go full circle all the way around it versus say a, a more streamlined profile of the skirt. So a lot of that is, a lot of that is basically going to be left up to the engine builder and his his uh, thoughts on what that engine is going to be subjected to in application. Okay, super. Well, guys, like I say, there are quite a few questions that we didn't get a chance to get to here, and uh, we will email those to you, and we'll let you guys uh, respond to everybody to get those all answered. I want to thank you guys for your time. Uh, we know you're busy, and uh, especially with everything that's going on right now, I know it's from a, you know, to get everybody together to do this was difficult. You guys are all in different locations, and uh, we do appreciate it. And um, again, thank you very much, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. So right now, I'll go back over to Amanda, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, how to wind things up and how to contact us. Yes. All right. Thanks again, everybody, for taking time out of your day. We really appreciate it. Um, when you leave today's webinar, there will be a survey that pops up. Please take a moment and fill that out. Let us know how we're doing, if there's something specific you'd like to see, or if you have any additional questions for any of us, you can put that all within that survey and we'll get that taken care of. Um, also, tomorrow you will see a email from us and that will have a link to, to today's recording. That is yours to do with as you wish. You can rewatch it, you can pass it along to other people within your establishment. Um, it's up to you how you would like to use that. And we also do post all of our webinars at aera.org. We do have a link on our homepage right now, so those are all easy to find. And lastly, you'll see our contact information is there. You can call us at 815-526-7600 or email any one of us on the AERA team, and we'll be happy to help you out. So thanks again, everybody, for your time. We appreciate it, and we hope you all have a great rest of your day.